Now, I'll request uh, Dr. Uh, B.S. Vivek, who is the Regional Maize Breeding Coordinator for Asia with CIMIT based in uh, Hyderabad at the Crisat campus. Okay, good morning. Okay, International Maize Improvement Consortium for Asia. I'm just going to touch on the principles of this particular partnership. Uh, I won't have time to go into the details of uh, the model, okay? And uh, when we started off in uh, 2010, we said, okay, we want to uh, have targeted impacts. Uh, Now, earlier, before this, we used to uh, make our own assessment and start doing the breeding. But here in IMIC, it's all identified by the partners, the private companies and the public partners. Okay, And it's not just donor-driven in that sense. So that's one important concept of it. So we wanted to enhance, guarantee and prioritize availability of high-value maize breeding germplasm in an era where, as Raghav mentioned, where germplasm sharing is becoming very difficult. Okay, Th uh, now for instance, uh, just to give you a perspective on this, 
uh, CIMIT every year notifies certain maze lines called CIMIT maze lines or CMLs. In the last 12 years or so, we have come out from the Asian program with 13 CMLs, okay, which uh, is freely available. It's a public good and anybody can access it and uh, get it just by requesting. But compare that with almost uh, 5,500 lines which have been displayed at IMIC field days in the same period of time. So the CMLs, which are of course a gold standard of the lines that we develop, uh, they just form 0.24% of all the other good germplasm which have you know, maybe not made it to the CML stage because of some small reason or the other, but they're very valuable and worth it. So becoming an IMIC member gives access to this kind of germplasm diversity and wealth, okay? So then uh, moving on, we wanted to tap into complementary strengths of CIMIT and uh, the private partner, as I mentioned. We want to give an equitable chance for small and medium-sized private seed companies to build a maize hybrid business. And we wanted to generate resources for implementing a centralized uh, maize germplasm improvement. So cost sharing comes in. So in doing so, activities for supportive processes were introduced like hybrid evaluation, you had training, and then thereafter, IMIC evolved into offering value-added services. And uh, most recently, we have uh, included the derivation of maize uh, double haploid lines through our facility, which I will briefly touch upon as I go along. So uh, with that, address the questions of uh, what are the comparative and competitive advantages of a public sector vis-a-vis -vis the private sector. Moving on, the business model really helped us gauge the pulse of the farmer. Okay, so it shifted, it has shifted Simit's uh, breeding focus from a completely trade-based approach, okay, uh, to actually first looking at target market segment. See, what are those segments? What are the germplasm backgrounds that are suitable there? And then we start thinking about what traits to move into that kind of a background for that market segment. So it's been quite an evolution of our own uh, breeding process, thanks to this uh, consortium and the partnership. Um, it has brought in enhanced research focus and accountability, as I mentioned, of all stakeholders. It has yielded cost-sharing benefits and it has expanded the collaborative testing networks. So that was in phases one and two. And moving on to phase three, what are the challenges we face? Really, phase three, it's about balancing germplasm diversity with eliteness. So diverse breeding sources, pools, populations, inbred lines, how do we bring those to a commercially viable format that the private sector needs. Okay, so that's one of the big balancing acts that uh, we are working on. Likewise, uh, as I said, we have strengths in stress tolerance, wide adaptation and stability of the hybrids that CIMIT ha has been developing over the years. But again, partners are asking for yield in optimal environments along with the stress tolerance. They're asking for specialty maize. How do we bring about that balance? Not just hybrid performance. Partners want niche hybrid performance, but they also want wide inbred adaptability. This is because partners want to move out of Eluru into other seed production zones. So a lot of people say, okay, things are bred in Hyderabad, but you take it to Bangalore, the inbred lines, you know, they're susceptible to other things and they collapse there. So we need to keep both in mind, hybrid performance versus inbred stability. Uh, enhanced genetic gains versus optimized cost. We can't be doing everything uh, using mar molecular markers. Two more because minutes, uh, we wait. Just two more minutes, okay. And uh, how do we keep international public goods versus proprietary germplasm uh, principles of the seed business? 
Um, <coughs> right, so there are various uh, sources of germplasm for startup uh, breeding programs, but um, I would say that really if you become a member of the consortium, you do have the best chances of getting good germplasm. Okay, so these are some of the visuals from uh, IMIC and uh, DH. Uh, uh, this particular facility was established at Kunigal and we have started uh, DH uh, inbred line development service for public partners. We'll be starting uh, the same service for private partners uh, very soon. Uh, we have fall armyworm net houses established at ICRISAT. And so with that, uh, we have, uh, I have covered what are the benefits of PPP to both public and private partners. Moving on to seed exchange challenges. Now, one of the biggest challenges we have had is the inability to get export permission from NBPGR for exporting 100% cement germplasm to private partners outside the country. We can uh, send it out to public partners, national programs. But for private sector, we have to go take the NBA route. In, one, in the one and only uh, example uh, case we had, we uh, went through the NBA and it took us three years to get the export permission. So this is definitely not uh, a viable solution. So this has huge impacts, implications, because uh, IMIC for regional seed companies cannot be executed from India because the main thing here is sending out the germplasm to private seed companies. Again, I mentioned about uh, DH line production service. We could do that, but how do we send the lines out of the country, even for the populations that have come in? Okay, so that's a question that we really need to answer very soon. Okay, so even uh, between uh, Cement hubs and the public sector, we have problems with export restriction. There's a limit of only half a kg of seed of an entry that can be exported. Now, breeding materials in some instances have to be sent out in kilogram quantities. We cannot do that right away. Now, applications for export permits are restricted to three or four windows in a year. However, good the planning, uh, this thing, uh, falls apart because there are times when you want to send seed and then you have to wait another three months to get the next uh, export permit. So that's uh, very inconvenient. And uh, finally, the import of seed for trials okay, is difficult as authorities are insisting the trials be replicated. Very often we bring in trials, we don't breed with it, we bring, bring in 30 seeds of a trial for single row evaluations or we could uh, uh, send it to the lab or for some genomic analysis and such seed is considered as germplasm. Now there are huge cost implications for bringing seed as trials versus germplasm and uh, even for CG centers this cost is not sustainable. Imagine if we were to bring uh, some thousand, two thousand entries, the cost, cost just multiply and go out of proportion. So with that I have uh, answered the question on how biodiversity authority rules and regulations affect the germplasm exchange and that's my final slide. Thank you very much. Thank you Vivek for uh, taking us through. I think in addition to the public-private partnership through the IMIC, we also talked about the difficulties of importing the germplasm, difficulties of exporting the germplasm, difficulties with NDPGR, with the Biodiversity Authority. I think that is what we really wanted uh, the things to come out so that uh, this forum could then uh, take it up with the concerned authorities and make sure that uh, things do move as quickly as possible because I have my own experience at ICRISAT when I was there. Uh, for two years we couldn't send anything out because uh, the 
where diversity authority rules came in and NBA, so NBPGR was itself not sure what to do and how to do. So very real issues.